News anchor goes straight to the hospital after viewer notices odd detail about her. But before we start, please make sure to subscribe to MNR TV and hit the bell so you never miss any upload from us. Also, leave a like right now. Victoria Price had been working for NBC for less than two years when the worldwide quarantine brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic hit. As her work ramped up in the news station, her health suffered, big time. And yet, if it weren't for one hawk-eyed viewer, Victoria never would have noticed. Victoria Price was unaware that her health was compromised. Her entire Florida news team was working long hours day and night, with no intentions of slowing down. If she wanted to keep her position, she'd have to keep her composure. In fact, she prided herself on it. As a journalist, it's been full throttle since the pandemic began, Price said on her Instagram. We were covering the most important health story in a century, but my own health was the farthest thing from my mind. That is, until a viewer chimed in. After a long day of newscasting, Price logged into her email to discover a message from a concerned viewer. Her words for Price were so jarring that the news anchor was quite concerned. The woman writing the email noted that Price's neck looked abnormally swollen. While she wasn't a doctor, the viewer told the news anchor she might want to visit a doctor and get her throat checked out. Of course, Price was skeptical. At first, Price hoped the viewer was mistaken. She wasn't feeling ill after all. Sure, her throat was a bit sore, but her job was to speak all day long. A little hoarseness was expected. Still, she decided to give her doctor a call. Price explained to her doctor that she had no symptoms other than a swollen throat. Her doctor informed her that even though she was mostly asymptomatic, she should pay him a visit. Frightened by his foreboding words, Price set up an emergency appointment right away. Price showed up at the doctor's office, masked up and ready for anything. He took a look at her thyroid and, after a few moments, confirmed her fears. Price had developed thyroid cancer in the middle of her neck. The news got even worse. While cancer is typically a disease that develops within our bodies, there are certain types that can be seen from the outside. The most common of these visible cancers could be hiding right under your nose. Well, perhaps a little lower than that. The most common symptoms of thyroid cancer include a swollen neck, pain up to the ears, and trouble swallowing. However, these can also be signs of a standard sore throat. Bad news kept piling up. Thyroid cancer can spread like wildfire. Once past the thyroid, it can spread far enough to cause irreversible damage. Unfortunately, Price's cancer had already begun to spread into her lymph nodes, but had it gone too far. Thankfully, Price's doctor said she was lucky her cancer had just begun its attack on her lymph nodes, which means the viewer might have caught it just in time. However, there was still a chance of complications as Price was going to need throat surgery. Thankfully, Price was very positive about her outcome. She was expected to only need one surgical treatment with no chemotherapy or additional procedures. To help calm her nerves, she decided to post about her diagnosis on social media and was instantly bombarded with questions. Price received tons of love and personal stories from her followers, plus an array of inquiries regarding her diagnosis. One user pointed out that they couldn't see the lump at all, to which Price responded with an insightful point. It's not super obvious unless you know what to look for, said Price, who then took a photo from a new angle. This helped her followers truly understand what the viewer saw and what to look for themselves. So how did Price's surgery go? On the day of her surgery, Price posted a photo of herself in recovery, enjoying a popsicle. Aside from a little stiffness, soreness, and weakness, I'm feeling pretty great, she said. As she healed, Price continued sharing about her experience on Instagram. She even claims that the surgery was the easiest part. Prior to my thyroidectomy, a lot of people told me the surgery is the easy part. I didn't understand that at first. Now I do. Price gave her followers a crash course about her months-long process of recovery, 
even sharing some not-safe-for-work photos. Her prognosis? It's not a death sentence, but it is a life sentence, says Price, who will forever be in recovery. I'll be on Levo and need to balance these levels for the rest of my life. I may be scarred, but I ain't scared. Thankful to still be alive, Price had some words of advice. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. That's the moral of the story. A little kindness went a long way for me. Price had one observant viewer to thank for catching the visible signs of danger, but even an audience of millions every morning didn't notice the quiet battle Today Show anchor Al Roker kept under wraps. Al was no stranger to medical drama. Between 2016 and 2020, he endured surgeries on his shoulder, hip, and knee. But this was a little different. After a routine physical, Dr. Vincent Laudun noticed elevated numbers of a prostate-specific antigen in his blood. He suggested Al get an MRI, so the newscaster did. This one was kind of just a weird feeling that nobody can outwardly see anything different about me, Al said, taking stock of his body. I looked in the mirror, there was nothing outwardly different, but I knew there was something intrinsically, inherently, internally different. The MRI results prove that. You hear the word cancer, Al said, and your mind goes, it's the next level, you know? In the brief seconds following the diagnosis, he could only think, I'm going to die. He suddenly felt very lonely in the cold, sterile doctor's office, wishing his wife was at his side. I feel badly because I didn't tell Deborah to come with me, Al said, speaking of ABC News reporter Deborah Roberts whom he's been happily married to since 1995. In hindsight, boy, I wish I'd told her to come. She was upset, and once she got past that, the reporter in her kind of took over, and then she's been at everything ever since. But after mulling over the diagnosis for a minute and finally speaking with Deborah and his three kids, Courtney, Nicholas, and Layla, Al returned to his signature optimism, even returning to work the very next day after his diagnosis. Though he kept his cancer personal at the time, eventually, though, he needed to make a bold move. On November 2020, the iconic weatherman appeared before viewers on the Today Show, just as he'd done so many times before. It's a good news, bad news kind of thing, Al said. Good news is, we caught it early. The bad, however, was a lot to handle on his own. Not great news, he continued is that it's a little aggressive, so I'm going to be taking some time off to take care of this. He assured viewers he would be back stronger than ever, a starkly different feeling than he'd had back in the doctor's office, because he had a plan. He and Deborah discussed some different options. After discussion regarding all of the different options, surgery, radiation, focal therapy, we settled on removing the prostate, Dr. Loudon said on Today Show. A week later, Al resurfaced online, letting viewers know that his four-hour surgery was complete and he was still taking some time to rest up. In an appearance on Today, he shared his story with viewers, hoping to demystify the terrifying cancer process. I feel good, Al said. The technology has gotten so good, they did it with a robot, that I felt much better after the surgery than I did with any of my joint replacements. I didn't feel like I had major surgery, but I've got this swelling around my stomach, so clothes don't fit quite right now. I'm very vain, so right now I feel like the Michelin Man. Recovery was a process all its own, however. The goal is to get him back to normal activity, his doctor said. And so, the fact that he walks a lot now, that he keeps himself in good shape, that he eats healthy, all of those things are really a plus when it comes to how he will recover after surgery. Al, of course, knew this was going to change his life regardless. It was this great relief, he told today after learning that there was no trace of cancer in his system. For a first start, this is terrific news. I'm going to be up for, and a lot of people who live with cancer, up for lifelong testing to make sure this doesn't come back. Doctors agreed. The prognosis at this point in time, based on how the surgery went and based on his pathology report, Everything looks very favorable, Al's doctor said. We would say that Al has no evidence of any cancer, but we'll continue to monitor him for several years. Still, Al wasn't finished. He now had a message for the entire world. 
Because prostate health has always been important to Al Roker, he had an exam on live TV in 2013 and teamed up with the NHL's New Jersey Devils in 2019 to create a prostate health public service announcement. He wanted to use this opportunity to push his message further, and to one community in particular. According to specialists at the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, black men are twice as likely to get prostate cancer, and twice as likely to die from it. Dr. Carol Brown says there are no symptoms with early prostate cancer, so screening saves lives, and African American men need to get screened, and should get screened usually starting at age 40. Al weighed in. The problem for African American men, he said, is that any number of reasons from genetic to access to health care can be a factor in the death tolls. He knew his friends and family would be worried about him, so Al delivered another message, once again full of his classic optimism. I don't want people thinking, oh poor Al, you know, because I'm gonna be okay, Al said. You know what, if that's what it takes to get 2020 out, then let's just get it out of the way. Boom. Let's just finish it off. I'm ready. How about you? In fact, Al found some surprising pleasantries in his diagnosis. Fans reaching out warmed his heart. You don't hear about this kind of national attention until you're dead, he said with a laugh. But when he announced he'd returned to the Today Show on November 22nd, fans only had one question for him, and it wasn't about his health. That's what everyone's been asking, is there going to be a Thanksgiving Day parade? We're telling them yes, but it will be different, Al said. But it's happening. My only question is, will I find Butter? Of course, Al did find his nemesis, the man dressed as Butter. All the while, fans were just happy to have Al at all, and his co-host. After all, Al's message to everyone, get checked, was bolstered by his co-anchor, Hoda Kotb, who had her own health issues. She'd cover topics ranging from international conflicts to informal conversations and has earned her place as an icon. But there's one story the Today Show host hadn't covered for some time, her own personal struggles. Her career started as a CBS News news assistant in 1986, and after anchoring some local news stations, she hit the big time, joining NBC News in 1997. She was warm, welcoming, and engaging but silent on some of the biggest struggles in her life. In 2007, though, Cotby landed a more cheerful gig on Today. She was joined by Kathy Lee Gifford a year later, and the pair soon built up one of the most natural on-screen partnerships on morning TV. Cotby would occasionally stand in for the show's main anchors, Matt Lauer and Savannah Guthrie, too. And Cotby would eventually have the chance to work alongside Guthrie on a permanent basis following Lauer's controversial departure from today during the winter of 2017, the Egyptian-American was announced as his official replacement. This was a history maker as it marked the first time that two women had taken both of the NBC show's main anchor positions. Fortunately, audiences seemed to love the duo. During their trial run together, Copy and Guthrie helped today to beat the show's fiercest rival, Good Morning America in the ratings for a month straight. But behind the scenes, Cotby was dealing with her fair share of personal trauma. And in time, she would receive news that would completely turn her life upside down. Up until that point, Cotby had seemingly been relatively healthy. She had been ambitious, too, ever since her college days. While studying broadcast journalism at Virginia Tech University in the mid-1980s, she became a regular voice on college radio at WVT. The same year that Copy graduated, she also landed a news position at CBS. This position was based in the Egyptian capital, Cairo. Copy's parents had grown up in the city before moving to Oklahoma to continue their studies and then start a family. The morning TV host would occasionally join her parents and two siblings on lengthy trips to their homeland. Copy would soon have further broadcasting roles in the likes of Florida, Illinois, and Mississippi for various ABC and CBS affiliates. She eventually relocated to New Orleans' WWL-TV after securing an anchor reporter position. The broadcaster spent six years at the network before making the step up to the big league with NBC. 
Yet while Copy's career has gone from strength to strength, her personal life has often experienced major setbacks. In 1986, she lost her father Abel to cardiac arrest. During a discussion on the documentary Dads, on Today in 2020, Copy revealed he taught us about hard work, like getting it done, and we all just believed that we can be anything and do anything. Copy has also been somewhat unlucky in love over the years. In 2012, she announced live on TV that her new liaison with lawyer Jay Blumenkopf was very much the real deal. He didn't seem to agree, though, as within a few months, the legal hotshot decided to break up with the Today Star. This wasn't the first time that Kotby had suffered relationship woes, either. In 2007, the news anchor began divorce proceedings against tennis coach Berzis Kanga a little more than a year after they'd walked down the aisle. The quick breakup came as a surprise to many considering the pair were hardly strangers when they said I do. Speaking to Radar Online in 2018, Kanga claimed that circumstances worked against the couple. The divorce happened under difficult conditions, he said. Those were personal reasons for both of us. The tennis coach also accepted some personal responsibility, adding, In hindsight, there was a level of immaturity on my part, mistakes I made. It was unfortunate we were married for a short time. It's a shame it transpired that way. Yet Kanga doesn't appear to harbor any ill feelings about tying the knot with Kapi. He gushed, I will always cherish our memories. She is the epitome of class. I think the world of her. We had great memories together. But for Kapi, the timing of her and Kanga's split couldn't have been much worse. You see, during the same year she filed for divorce, the broadcaster received some devastating news about her health. While everything in Hoda Kapi's life was already turning on its head, a routine visit to her doctor suddenly turned into a frightening diagnosis. While sitting in her NBC office speaking to an intern, her doctor called with life-changing news. Hoda wasn't expecting anything negative. In fact, she didn't even think of asking the intern to leave the room when the doctor called. In a matter of seconds, however, Hoda, now the host of a show called Your Total Health, lost her smile. Her doctor diagnosed her with breast cancer. The news was so shocking, Hoda was speechless after hanging up. The intern saw there was something wrong and decided to let herself out, but not before offering Hoda a hug. It was exactly what she needed at the time. Although it was a difficult time, she decided to not tell anyone at work or any viewers at home. She even went as far as continuing to work at NBC while undergoing treatment, as though nothing was wrong. That changed after a chance encounter on an airplane. Hoda Kotb was aboard a plane when the stranger sitting beside her asked about a compression sleeve she was wearing. The journalist could have lied and said it was for muscle recovery, but she decided to reveal the true reason why she was wearing it. Hoda explained to the man that the compression sleeve helped her on her road to recovery from breast cancer. She also added, but I hope that's not how you remember me. The stranger had a shocking reply. Having cancer is part of you, the man said. His last words really moved Copy to take action. It made her realize you can put your stuff deep in your pockets and take it to your grave, or you can help someone. The man's words left such an impression on Hoda that she decided to do what she did every single day at work, start a conversation. And the best way to do that, she thought, was to get NBC Today's show involved. In groundbreaking television, Hoda let cameras follow her around as she battled hard against breast cancer. Her recovery was daunting, but she demystified the process and let others get a peek at what to expect. <laughs> 